Hi there, everybody. Welcome to episode 7 of my tutorial series for Captain of Industry. I'm Icon, and today we have a couple of different topics on the episode here. So first and foremost, I want to get the ship ready to sail. So we're going to talk about how to set that up and what's important about that. I'm also going to talk about irrigated farms. As you see here, we have our first up and running and what you need to do for them and what's the good news about them and how it works. And we're also going to have a look on this wonderful manufacturing straight street that we have built there. Talk a little bit about it now that it's finished. And I'm also going to cover the topic of efficient concrete in this episode. And if there's really that much time left, we're going to head on over into the tier two research lab thematic. So that's the stuff. Let's get on going. So when you start out the game, the shipyard is damaged and you need to repair it. This does cost you 100 construction parts. And we could have done that a while earlier ago because we were pretty much already in the, in the clear with the construction parts. And I'd strongly suggest you to do get this done as quick as you can because your ship will help you. A ton in terms of exploration and such and really the only investment we'll need here right now are these construction parts and diesel so but more about that once they are done here it'll take a few moments until they have delivered the construction parts so our mine control tower has a lack of dump areas so let's see what do they want to dump dirt and coal the dirt dude is setting off so as we see here, our our mines get more and more issues with the fact that they don't know where to dump their stuff. The little dump we have built here is already way, way beyond uh, its capacities. And what we're going to do now, we're just going to set up a larger one. So let's build another ramp. I really like it how this game... Oh, I don't want it like that. I really like it how this game does uh, give you the opportunity to just keep building the way you did before and build real structures out of that. It's really cool. So here we're ramping it up. And let's see. You shouldn't build too high though because that stuff is growing unstable because, you know, there is no walls around it. We have to build those later. Okay. Problem solved, well, let's talk about this here. So here we have an automated street now that produces for us construction parts, tier one and two, and maintenance. We have a bit of a problem here, and that's the fact that all the electronics are rushing here into the unit storage, and they get totally poured into that maintenance depot, and we don't have any steady surplus of electronics automatically into this thing. We have to fix that at some point, but I decided that our trucks are keeping that thing stable enough so we don't have to do this. I'm emphasizing this mainly because that's a cool thing about this game. Trucks will pick up jobs that you haven't automated yet. Just over don't overstrain your little dudes. And keep in mind one thing, your trucks are thirsty, thirsty for diesel. And I say that because, let's head on over here. When we check out our oil pumps, the reserve status is at, you know, only 86% at this point, and we're not really heavily straining it. And if you look around on your on your on your island, you see that we have this one deposit here. And I checked before this episode, I have only found this other deposit as an oil, as an extra oil. So that's all oil that we have until we can find some out on the sea, because that's another technology that we're going to unlock, sea drilling. But until then, keep in mind that diesel is a limited source here, as long as you make it out of oil. But it's really not that much something you need to worry about, because there is enough oil on this island. As long as you play progressively ahead, you'll have no issues with that. I just wanted to pinpoint that the amount of oil on this island is not endless and using your infrastructure or, or building up an infrastructure grid that's wholly relying on trucks. I mean, you have 50 of those. You can upgrade that limit and such. It'll drain your oil really quickly. And I could imagine that 
you even could get into problems if you'd rely too hard on that. But that's just theory crafting. Now, irrigated farming. It's a pretty cool thing. The irrigated farm has now the soil water level available and an irrigation tank. The irrigation tank, of course, sitting right here, doesn't get anything for free. What we're going to use here is a groundwater pump because I felt like it's time to start using that and it's also more reliable than the rainwater harvester. So, And since the food production is something that I really value as extremely important, I don't I didn't want to do anything lackluster here. So it's the same as usual. We're just going to connect that with a pipe. I'm going to leave some extra room here around the uh, entry around the connector for the fertilizer. We're not producing any fertilizer yet, but maybe this will be a spot where we want to connect later. Okay. So that's pretty much all we need to do, but the really important thing to, to mention here is some plants just die without a steady surplus of water. The vegetables are a good example. If you have the unlucky case that there is not enough rain falling, you lose an entire harvest. The irrigation negates that problem. So therefore, I really find those irrigated farms extremely valuable and they are absolutely worth the pain as soon as you have the feeling that your population is eating more than you can provide. As we see here, the potatoes are also slowly depleting. That's mainly because our, our population is growing, but it's also harvest time. The two farms here are getting the job quite well done, but as soon as I have enough advanced construction parts, I definitely want to set the uh, potatoes here on irrigation too. I haven't lost a uh, crop, a, a farm, a, a potato crop yet, but I always like to imagine that this is a lot easier and reliable than that. But I gotta say, judging from my own experiences, and correct me if I'm wrong there, vegetables are the first stuff that really need the irrigation. Potatoes somehow seem to sustain from rain, but like I said, correct me if I'm wrong there. I'm, not exactly sure if that's really the case, but I haven't had any experience so far that the game notified me that my potatoes are dying because of lack of water. With the vegetables, they did. Alright, so the ship dock is now ready, and we have finished the efficient concrete. More about that later. So the thing here is, the ship now needs repairs as well. So we're going to invest some odd number of iron plates, really nothing too dramatic, but what's really important there is your ship needs a crew and it needs diesel. I haven't uh, noticed that the ship can be, or I haven't seen any other way for the ship being fueled than being connected by a pipe. The ship seems to be exclusively running on piped diesel. I really tried to get the diesel on the uh, on the on the ship with uh, with with trucks, but I didn't manage. If there's a way that eluded my brain, feel free to add a comment about that. Here we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're just going to draw a big long pipe over there. But since this is going to be a very high, uh, very long thing, I'm going to press E three times now. So we're going to pipe it over like that all the way I'm paying close attention to the to the fact that I really want that this connection won't bother with my infrastructure in general and look at this quality of life here it's still on heightened level you don't need to lower it manually you just need to hover your cursor on the connector and it does the rest automatically oh uh, yeah great let's do it like that i actually prefer it like that i thought it was a, a whoopsie but it's actually not the automatic wanted to draw the line here over the ground and this one looks a little bit weird but it's actually way more efficient we can drive along there so to give you an to give you a good example of what i'm talking about here this uh liquid pump here is actually blocking our infrastructure this pipe here is not high enough for the trucks to drive through, 
and therefore everybody wanting to reach my diesel generators here has to drive around complicated. That's not really cool, so... I just uh, didn't fix it yet because I wanted to showcase it when we do this before I fix it because I, I really want to emphasize these things. There's a lot to learn out of mistakes, always. And basically what we're going to do next is we're going to make the liquid pumps uh, water, uh, liquid pumps uh, pipe the same height as this one and uh, we'll have a lot easier driving there as you see here those guys they're just uh, setting on through here easy so now it'll take a moment until the uh, diesel will reach the fuel tank of the ship for whatever reason that is there we go now after the pipe is full you see there's a trickle into there. But as long as the pipe ain't full, there's nothing trickling in there. It confused the hell out of me for, at first. But basically, the gist of it is, the longer the pipe goes, the longer, the, the more total material must be in the pipe to transport something. As you see here, these things have a throughput of one unit per second. Also very important to know for every complex that might grow hungrier than one diesel per second. So this pipe here is only used for the ship and we're going to leave it like that because i don't want to i want to start an entire episode with the whole topic of exploration exclusively because i think that's one thing that a lot of people will be interested in and there's still a lot of stuff that we got to do here before we start exploring although i gotta say exploration is really bountiful and i'm delaying it here a little bit but i can't explain everything at once I'm sure you guys understand. So, over here, the situation is golden. We're stockpiling those construction parts tier 2, finally. And that means we're also able to upgrade ourselves towards electric assemblies. And electric assemblies are really important, because they are just double as powerful as your regular assembly. And they only need two more workers. So basically you invest only 50% more material for double the output. That's amazing to say the least. So we're going to start now to upgrade our vital parts of the production chain there. The construction part per, uh, production especially. And we're... Why can't I quick deliver these? Ah, because I don't have the electronics stored, that's why. So, electronics is still a little bit of a uh, of an issue there. So, I figured that I also want to build a, another electronics facility there today. That was another thing on my mind. So, we're going to let it flow like this. Yeah, like that. Let's put it up like there. Just want to make sure that they are roughly on the same grid. I like it when stuff is uh, pretty much uh, on the same grid. Just a little bit of a fetish of mine. I know, I know. But Okay, let's copy ourselves that uh, belt. And we're just going to pipe it through like that. And here the game just gives us that bridge automatically. And I can't tell you how much I like it. That the captain of industry does these little things for you automatically. So this is really, really, really uh, comfy. So here we go. This place produces electronics and we're just going to put that on a flat conveyor here. So that's going to be not as much of an issue anymore because that's been bothering me a lot to be fair. Pickup can reach destination. Oh yeah, so here we've ha we've made another whoopsie, or well, not that really. So our trucks are trying to deliver the concrete slabs into the warehouse here, which ain't possible anymore. So luckily we have already. Where are they? I have, I have signs them, haven't I? Ramps. Where are the ramps? Here, ramps. So we're going to use our first ramp here. I don't know why we didn't uh, have them here. So allows vehicles to transport the, and to cross these things. And they come in different sizes. 
But since this here will only be needed for trucks, there's going to be no pro problem there. It'll it'll take a moment though for it to finish, and maybe it's a little bit overkill and not the optimal way to um, to show you how these things are used. But get the idea. It's all about the principle. So with these ramps, you can make your cars drive over these thingies here and it already gives you a nice impression about the logistical um, challenges of this game because I really want to mention here how effing big this bridge is so bringing your trucks above conveyor belts comes with a huge space spatial price and that's on purpose if you ask me Devs could have programmed way, uh, way smaller bridges, but they didn't for a reason. So we're going to uh, set this thing on a uh, very important uh, delivery. As you see here, there's now lots of trucks standing still, don't knowing what they should do. I really wonder why we don't have the quick delivery available, because we actually should. But probably we don't have enough concrete slabs at our disposal. So even even better to start now talking about the concrete, the, the efficient concrete recipe. We have unlocked efficient concrete there, and I want to showcase that because I really find it a really powerful tool and important. And why the hell is Ah, so we have a, a slack situation. So I'm not exactly proud of it, but uh, we're just going to do this like that. And we're just going to store it even f further. I was just wondering why we didn't get any iron plates anymore. Ah. Oopsie. Brain fart. Of course it has to go like this. Alright, let's pipe it around a little bit and take care of this problem later. Slack is really an issue, and I'm, automate, I'm, and I'm quick delivering these things because I want the uh, iron production run further pronto. That's really important because we are, we're gonna be in trouble if our iron production is going to be hampered. Okay, so where were we? I wanted to figure, I wanted to show you the efficient concrete recipe. So efficient concrete is a recipe which yields double as much concrete in the same time. I just want to pinpoint that this is the major difference there. You get eight concrete slabs in 40 seconds. The other recipe yields four concrete slabs in 40 seconds. The, the other difference there is that your recipe now requires you to add in sand. Sand can be produced out of gravel, but it also can be just directly extracted out of the ground here so you can't even showcase that in the layer system sand there we go but since i end up with a lot of uh, with a lot of rock here so you see we're going to make this uh, happen the other way around so the recipe itself is really basically the same you see you need cement you need the crushed slack, you need water, but you need on top of that sand. And what's really, really cool about this new recipe is the fact that you need, you'll need you use way more crushed slag and way more gravel. Ideally, if you're going to do this like I plan to do this, let's get onto the recipe again. I plan to do this uh, to I plan to produce sand out of gravel. In this scenario, I don't want to use this recipe that uses gravel. I want to use the recipe which uses exclusively crushed slag, mainly because we are in such a trouble getting that stuff rid of. So I see that as a wonderful opportunity to get rid of that stuff. And the best part about it is we really don't need we really can stay with our same setup as before. The main difference is we're going to forbid now this part there, and we're going to copy one of these dudes, and let's uh, rotate that into this direction. 
And this guy will be producing sand for us. U-shaped conveyor goes in there because sand is a loose good. And we're also going to set up a storage down there. Yeah, rock. So we're going to set up a loose storage like there. Can't align them to each other. Bothers me a little bit, but what cares? What cares? So here we go. Oh, I didn't realize the. <laughs> okay. So the um, what's happening here? Oh, we're going to make it a little bit better, clearly visible there. I have no clue, honestly. So let's do the loose storage a little bit further away. The entrance for the material is on an elevated is elevated there. That's cool. I love those little realistic uh, vibes there. So here we go. And this one will be exclusively for rock, so we can't create slack out of that. So, ah, wait a sec. No. No, 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 no. Wait a sec here. Uh, I have a... It's not like this. I forgot that we need to put something in between. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little bit... Uh, all over the place today. Of course, we need to copy this dude, and uh, we need a second one of this kind. So this guy makes gravel, and this guy makes sand out of that gravel, and now it's right. I'm sorry for this. I, uh... I didn't mean to confuse you. So now it does make sense, and now we put the rock storage at the end of the line and connect that with another with a couple of u-shaped conveyors so there we go now once that stuff's all up and running we're going to be easy able to just uh, swap over to the other recipe without ending without changing too much this place here will now exclusively produce crushed slag for us and tell you what, we're also going to go for more automation, you know me. So we're going to set up another loose storage tank here for the slag. My, my facility back there will be very grateful for that as well. And this way, our trucks don't need to transport these uh, kind of goods anymore. Like I said, keep automating your stuff. You'll be not regretting it. And now we have... Pretty much everything set up and running we need. So there's the first batch of sand coming on in. That's a cool thing. As long as your machines don't need that stuff, they won't be bothered by it, though. You see, it doesn't even add it in until we have changed the recipe. So now we're going to change our processes because I am kind of certain that we can. So let's shut these off and only turn on the crash slug. Crashed slug, exactly. Crashed slag. <laughs> Recipe. And uh, we just doubled our output. Isn't it awesome? And we didn't really need that much of a uh, of a thing there. Pickup cannot deliver gravel. No valid destination. So. Obviously, we seem to have a little bit of a situation there with the gravel. Is gravel a lose good? I have never checked it out, honestly. Yeah, gravel is a lose good. So I could have uh, slapped in a storage container in between those, but I actually didn't. But my poor old truck there instantly removed cargo from this truck. All right, let's do this. Because this, this guy is, uh, this is a problem from the past. But this shouldn't be actually any any problem in the future anymore. So, our copper mine has no more mining designators, so let's give them some new. Always keep attention on the fact that you don't want to dig in the vicinity of your mining tower. Can't emphasize it enough, and stable ground is an issue. And here we go. We're, we're, we're going to need to change our mining techniques in the near future as well, because... We won't be, uh, it won't be staying that easy. It'll grow more complicated as well, but 
more about that on another occasion. So what's really cool now is that we got this uh, massive production of concrete slabs and it's it's about time that we also finally set this on a uh, on a warehouse. I don't know why we didn't so far. Or I do know because of the lack of construction parts of the past, but as you see here our our projects are getting done quicker and quicker. And these uh, procedures here are needing our trucks less and less, so I really do like that. So here we still have the loose storage for rocks, and I'll keep that, because this loose storage for rocks is a valuable buffer for these mining ops to dump their stuff at. Basically it would be also worth it to set up another of these loose storages somewhere around here for the copper and the coal mine, but they are managing somehow. And here we go. So this guy has... there's... Wait a sec, I never assigned the limestone storage? Shame on me. So here you see me changing up my mistakes. Alright, so we have sciced up pretty much everything we wanted. And the new concrete recipe is really, really valuable. I can't stress it out enough how valuable that is. You have noticed how long we needed to set up that simple ramp there, because concrete was already pretty much a uh, a rare good, so to say. In this regard, we really got to be careful with that, with our, with our productions. So, yeah, the concrete uh, unit storage is empty. So we really needed that recipe, and as you've seen, it's really easy to set up. Actually, we really only needed these, this little uh, trio here, and that's been it. So I really feel like we have made a lot of progress on this episode. And our food situation is also growing better and better. As a matter of fact, we do seem to have even a little bit of an overproduction right now, which is pretty cool, but actually more or less a uh, coincidence. What has happened with the irrigations here is that we have a more reliable harvesting cycle, which is pretty good. Another thing that we're going to do in the next time is we're going to add in tier 2 housing. Of course you don't need to build new blocks, you can also just tell your people to upgrade the existing housing. Better housing will result in higher happiness of your people, and more occupants, obviously. Our unity production will be influenced by that, and, well, I'm pretty sure that better housing will also increase the health, but um, don't nail me down on that, I haven't checked yet. We're going to get and do that in the next couple of episodes. Another thing that I want to feature in the next episodes is also the captain's office, but the captain's office has pretty high resource costs with 200 each, of the construction parts and the edicts you are unlocking are useful but I feel like other things are way more important than that because basically the captain's office will allow you to put up passive bonuses for your city but um, not much more beyond that so next episode we're going to cover two bigger topics First off, exploration. Sorry for holding you guys back on that, but I felt like I really wanted to cover these other topics today. And the other thing we're going to cover in the next episode is the Tier 2 Research Lab, which starts to require lab equipment. And we're going to start setting that up. And it's not really that much of a biggie, but it has to be done before we can actually get producing. So or researching, I should rather say. So my friends, thanks for watching everybody. I hope that was helpful for you. Next episode, exploration and science. And feel free to leave me your comments down below if you have any additions, questions, or whatever's in your mind. I'd love to hear from you, as you all know. And leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side, and I'd be super happy to have you. Have a wonderful day, and see you soon. Goodbye.